I would like to explain uh, a concept in alternating current electricity principles that a lot of people find a little bit difficult to understand and which I have found rather difficult to explain uh, clearly without getting into calculus and getting into a huge mess. So I'm going to do my best here to try and explain what is meant by the term RMS when talking about AC voltage. RMS means root mean square. Where in the world does that, does that expression come from, you might wonder. Well, let's take a look at a very basic alternating current wave called a sine wave. And the reason it's called a sine wave is because it is a variant of the mathematical sine function. In this particular case, the voltage on the vertical axis, 0.2 volts for each graduation, the voltage equals the sine of the phase angle or the phase position in time. So zero degrees, we start at zero volts going positively. 90 degrees is a quarter of the way through the cycle. We reach a voltage of plus one volt peak. Then we get down to zero again halfway through the cycle at 180 degrees and continue on negatively until we reach the negative peak voltage of minus one volt at 270 degrees, three quarters of the way through the cycle, 360 degrees, all the way back to the beginning of the next cycle. The reason that we have these degree designators is because these represent fractions of a full circle, and in fact, sine waves are manifestations of circular motion. That's why sometimes it, the sine function is called a circular function. Well, suppose that we take a plain old ordinary resistor and we subject that resistor to this AC voltage so that current flows through that resistor and we get heat in that resistor. So what we have here in effect is a resistor. I'm going to try and draw one for you here. Well, let's try that again. One thing about this particular program is it its little icons like to not respond to my commands. It's always been like that and it drives me nuts. Anyway, here is a resistor. We place <coughs> this voltage across that resistor and we get a certain amount of current through that resistor. Now, suppose that we take that alternating current voltage away and instead we put a direct current voltage across it like we would get from a battery and we adjust that voltage until we get the exact same amount of current the exact same amount of heat dissipated in that resistor as we got when we had the alternating current waveform across it what we call that is the DC equivalent voltage the DC equivalent voltage of that AC waveform right here. The DC equivalent voltage is going to turn out to be approximately 0 0.707 volts DC. The 0 0.707 is 1 divided by the square root of 2 in, in the exact number. This is an approximation to three decimal places, but the exact number is 1 divided by the square root of 2, or, if you prefer, the square root of 1 half. Well, that's all very interesting. How can we actually derive that notion? Where, where does that come from? How do we know that? Well, the way that we define that is the root mean square. That means the square root of the mean of the squares of all of the instantaneous values taken as a whole over one complete cycle of the wave. So let's square this wave. We get then the square of the sine function. And when we do that, we get something that looks like that dashed 
purple waveform there. That is what the square of the sine function looks like. Notice that there are no longer any negative values and that is why we square the function because when we square it we get rid of all the negative values. The DC equivalent voltage of this original green AC wave here let's cut that out of there the DC equivalent voltage of this is zero but obviously if we place this waveform this AC across a resistor we're not going to get the same thing as we would get if we didn't place anything across it at all we're going to get current through that resistor and we're going to get heat in that resistor and that amount of heat is going to produce the same it's going to be the same as the amount of heat uh, that the DC equivalent voltage would produce 0 0.707 volts so we've squared each and every value in this green wave now and we've got this that is the square of the sine function over one complete cycle. Now the mean is what we do next. We work backwards. It's the root of the mean of the square. So we've taken care of the square. Now it's time for the mean. If we take, in order to take the mean of this, we need to do something called mathematical integration. <coughs> well, unfortunately, that that works out to be just a wee bit complicated for this discussion. I, it's a calculus problem and I'm not going to go there now but here's another way to look at that. Consider the area under this curve, the area under this dashed purple curve li that lies above this horizontal axis so the combined area of these two things. Now imagine the width of this uh, interval in time is 360 degrees. What's going to happen if we rearrange this area into a rectangle with the same width? How high is that rectangle going to be? And the result that we find is that it's exactly half as high as the peaks of this squared wave so we get a rectangle if we integrate this function and then rearrange the area we get this red rectangle the same width one complete cycle and half of the height so this voltage value right here is exactly one half of a volt we've taken the mean so the mean of this purple dashed wave right here, the average taken over time of each and every instantaneous voltage, infinitely many of them. That's where calculus is kind of cool. We're dealing with infinitely many things in finite uh, number of steps. We get this value and it's the mean is exactly a half and it's kind of intuitive. You can kind of see that right here. Um, this waveform looks symmetrical and it appears like if we we get something like a sine wave if we draw an axis right through a half of a volt so we've taken the mean well now we have to take the square root of that and the reason we have to take the square root of that is because we squared the function to begin with now we undo that the purpose in squaring that function was really just an excuse to get rid of the negative values so we could take a square root and get something that that turned out to be a real number and we didn't get into imaginary number arithmetic and all that kind of esoteric stuff so when we take the square root of one half what do we get you guessed it 0 0.707 that is to 3 decimal places but it's actually one over the square root of two or if you prefer the square root of one half 0 0.707 volts root mean square so that is where we get the formula that tells us that for a perfect sine wave without any DC component like what we originally had that green wave that we originally had
the root mean square voltage of a wave like that is 0 0.707 times the positive peak or minus 0 0.707 times the negative peak voltage and that's where this number comes from and all the other numbers that we get when we talk about peak to peak we have to divide this uh, conversion factor by two and of course if we want to convert from root mean square to peak or peak to peak we have to take the reciprocal of this or the reciprocal of half of this but this is where this this mysterious concept comes from and it's just a mathematical way of finding the DC equivalent voltage of an AC wave. Now the beauty of the root mean square tactic is that it works for any wave, not just for a sine wave. If we can figure out what the mathematical function of a particular AC wave is, and then we can apply the calculus to that, we first square it, then we use calculus to find the mean, and that can get pretty messy in some waveforms. It's simple in some, really messy in others. Then we take the square root of that result, which is very easy to do. Then we always end up with the root mean square or DC equivalent voltage. So if we put a an irregular wave, AC wave, across a resistor, we get a certain amount of heat. We want to find out how much DC voltage we'd have to put across it to get that same amount of heat. Well, we can do an experiment, or we can calculate the root mean square. So that's where that comes from, and I hope that uh, maybe clears up a little bit of your confusion on this topic.